Ash Wednesday, one of the most well-known and important holidays on the Christian calendar, ushers in the Lenten season. It is a week of reflection, fasting, and repentance observed mostly by Catholics and many other Christians in anticipation of Easter Sunday when Christ will rise from the grave and bring about salvation. Originating in ancient customs, Ash Wednesday was integrated into Catholic Church teaching during the 325 BC Council of Nicaea. The Council also determined that a 40-day fast should be performed throughout Lent. Roman Emperor Constantine's goal at the time was to unite heathens and Christians under the Roman Empire in a peaceful manner. Even after the Nicaea Council, there was disagreement on the official start date of Lent. Pope Gregory moved the start of Lent to Ash Wednesday, 46 days before Easter, from its original date of the fourth Sunday of the year. With this change, Lent may now last for 46 days of fasting and feasting instead of just six Sundays. Pope Gregory also began sprinkling parishioners' foreheads with ashes in the shape of a cross. Ash Wednesday is observed by several Western Christian groups. Roman Rite Roman Catholics and a few Protestant denominations, including Lutherans, Anglicans, Reformed Churches, Baptists, Methodists, the Evangelical Covenant Church, and Mennonites, are among these groups. The United Protestant denominations, including the Church of North India and the United Church of Canada, as well as the Moravian Church and Metropolitan Community denominations also commemorate Ash Wednesday. Both the Community of Christ and certain independent Catholics acknowledge the practice. Ash Wednesday is often not observed by the Eastern Orthodox Church. Instead, the Orthodox Great Lent starts on Clean Monday. Still, a tiny minority of Orthodox Christians adhere to the Western Rite. Because the date of Ash Wednesday is set by the Orthodox computation of Pasha, which can be up to a month later than the Western celebration of Easter, the Eastern Orthodox Church commemorates Ash Wednesday frequently on a different day than the previously stated faiths. Reformed churches have never observed Ash Wednesday or Lent in general because of the Reformed regulative principle of worship. Still, a few Reformed churches follow Lent on a voluntary basis nowadays. Ash Wednesday is marked in the Roman Catholic Church by sin confession, abstinence from meat, beginning at age 14, and fasting. Roman Catholics between the ages of 18 and 59, whose health permits them to fast, are allowed to eat one large meal and two smaller meals on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, although the total amount of food allowed cannot exceed the two meals. In addition to the minimum obligations of the Church, some Catholics prefer to fast completely or consume just bread and water until nightfall. Wednesday and Good Friday are both off-limits days for meat-eating. Some Roman Catholics observed a continuous fast during Lent, concluding only after the Easter Vigil, as was usual for the Church. When the Ambrosia Rite is observed, the day of fasting and abstinence is postponed until the first Friday of Ambrosia Lent, which is nine days later. Many Lutheran churches instruct their members to fast on Ash Wednesday, and others choose to fast every day of Lent, especially Good Friday. One Lutheran Congregations, a handbook for the discipline of Lent, counsels followers to fast with only one basic meal during the day, usually without meat, on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. The full 40 days of Lent are days of fasting in the Church of England and a large portion of the worldwide Anglican Communion, even though Fridays are also defined as days of abstinence in the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. According to St. Augustine's prayer book, fasting is generally implying no more than a light breakfast, one full meal, and one half supper for the 40 days of Lent, and abstinence is refraining from flesh meat on all Fridays of the church year, except those during Christmas time. 
In certain low church traditions, extra rites are often added to or substituted for existing ones as a further way to symbolize the day's penitence and confession. In a common variant, for example, little cards are distributed to the congregation, asking each person to write a sin they would want to confess. At the altar table, these little cards are brought forward and burnt. During the Victorian era, theaters offered alternative types of entertainment on Ash Wednesday instead of costume shows, as required by the Church of England, Anglican Church. Icelandic children dress up, sing, and drape little sacks of ashes over the back of an unwary person. The Catholic and Methodist faiths say that the ashes should originate from palm branches that were blessed during the Palm Sunday ceremony the previous year, baptized with holy water, and perfumed with incense. However, according to a Church of England document, they may be made from palm crosses that have already been burnt. Other than the holy water sprinkling that occurs during the Catholic rite of blessing, these sources make no reference of adding anything to the ashes. An Anglican website states that the ashes can be restored by mixing them with a small amount of olive oil or holy water. Ash represents penance and repentance, serving as a reminder that God is understanding and forgiving of those who humble themselves before Him. Seeking God's mercy during the Lenten season is imperative, and the Church exhorts us to do so via reflection, prayer, and penance. Christians celebrate Ash Wednesday by having ashes ceremoniously sprinkled over their heads or, more often in English-speaking countries, by having a visible cross drawn on their foreheads. Saying, Memento, Homo, Chia Pulvisies, et in palavra reverteris, which means, Remember, man, that thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return, is customarily accompanied by this gesture. This tradition is attributed to Pope Gregory I the Great, however this is probably not accurate given Ash Wednesday was not practiced during his lifetime. The age-old phrase gently reminds believers of their mortality and sinfulness as well as the pressing needs to repent of their sins. It is based on the words spoken to Adam and Eve after they sinned. Remember that you are dust, and to dust, you shall return, is the alternate formula that was added and ranked first in the 1969 Roman Rite change. People who participate in such Catholic ceremonies, whether in a church or another location, typically carry home sanctified ashes to place on the heads of other family members. It's a good idea to have envelopes on hand to facilitate this procedure. At home, the ashes are subsequently spread with little to no ceremony. When applying ashes on their heads, many Christians choose to make the sign of the cross on their forehead, which remains visible throughout the day. The churches have not mandated that the ashes be removed right away after being received. Nonetheless, as a statement of one's Christian faith, some Christian authorities, such as Lutheran pastor Richard P. Booker and Catholic Bishop Kieran Corney, advise us leaving the ashes on the forehead for the remainder of the day. Methodist preacher and founder of the Red Letter Christian Movement Morgan Guyton encouraged Christians to wear their ashes all day as a symbol of their freedom to pursue their faith. Ashes were employed by ancient societies as a symbol of sadness. Tamar went away wailing, with her face buried in her hands, and scattered ashes on her head and tore her robe, following her half-brother's sexual abuse, 2 Samuel 13 verse 19. Remorse for mistakes and misdeeds was another meaning associated with the gesture. Ash may stand for death and going back to the primordial, immoral state. Job tells God, I have heard about you through my ear, but now my eye is seeing thee, in Job 42 verses 5 to 6. The prophet Jeremiah urges, O daughter of my people, throw on sackcloth, roll in the ashes. 
For this reason, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes, Jude 6.26. The prophet Daniel related how, fasting and clothed in sackcloth and ashes, he turned to the Lord God and begged with him in prayer, Daniel 9 verse 3. The Maccabees were a group of rebels who battled for Jewish freedom before the period of the New Testament. They utilized ashes to get ready for combat. According to 1 Maccabees 3.47, also read 4.39, that day they fasted and put on sackcloth. They sprinkled ashes on their heads and tore their garments. Ash Wednesday is 46 days ahead of Easter Sunday, making Easter Sunday a movable feast based on the phases of the moon. Only on February 4th, and in years when Easter falls on March 22nd, is Ash Wednesday possible. These years were 1598, 1693, 1761, and 1818. 2285 will see it happen again. Ash Wednesday has happened in 1666, 1734, 1886, and 1943. It can also come as late as March 10th, when Easter Sunday occurs on April 25th. That is scheduled for 2038. Since the Gregorian calendar was introduced in 1582, Ash Wednesday has never fallen on Leap Year Day, which is February 29th. However, in 2096, this will happen for the first time. Ash Wednesday falls on February 29th in just four previous years of the third millennium, 2468, 2688, 2840, and 2992. Ash Wednesday is on February 29th if and only if Easter is on April 15th in a leap year. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on more exciting content from Junior Library's YG Classroom.